Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, finally, some exciting stuff from ZT and Kershaw coming your way. Uh, we're going to take a look at some new off-grid knives, uh, one a new model, and then a bunch of new coloration there, and then the lucky number seven knife giveaway. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Jarrell Kelsey, and it was on my car Bowie uh, short where I was showing off my shred. And he says, uh, laughing my ass off, Leroy from the movie Fame had one of them, meaning a Bowie knife, in his waist at his School of Performing Arts audition. Classic name for a blade. So I don't know if any of you are, well, I know some of you are old enough to remember the, the uh, TV show Fame. I did not watch it, was not interested, but my sister did, my older sister. And uh, so I'm going to have to ask her if she remembers the character Leroy, and if indeed he uh, was carrying a Bowie knife in his waist. Now, actually, I'm sure... Uh, uh, since Jarrell Kelsey tunes into the Knife Junkie podcast, he probably knows better than my sister. Uh, but still, I love, I love, love, love knowing that, uh, well, that fame had uh, a Bowie knife in it because, frankly, that was one of the reasons I didn't watch it. I don't ever remember seeing a knife on anyone's belt. So uh, that is good news. Jarrell Kelsey, thanks for keeping it real and taking me back to the 80s. Uh, love that. Uh, Love that little walk down memory lane. All right, keep uh, commenting and keep watching the videos. I'm, I'm loving the comments. They're actually very hard to keep up with because there are a lot of them now. I've, I've been uh, gaining in subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you so much for spending your time uh, with us here. Uh, but at the same time, it makes it harder to, to read the comments. So uh, this one really jumped out at me. Loved it. All right, uh, I think it might just be time for a pocket check. In my front right pocket today, that's the position for the three and a half to four inch or bigger uh, tactical folding knife, uh, because that's just my taste. Uh, I had the Resco Instruments Mekong Delta Combat Folder. Uh, this was the knife that uh, um, I originally thought was American made and uh, then realized or found out that Best Tech made it. And uh, well, who else, who better to make such an awesome thing? Uh, from over there in China, besides Best Tech or Riyadh. Those are my two favorite manufacturers from over there. Story behind this is Resco Instruments is a company uh, made up of old frogmen. Those are Navy SEALs. That's what they used to call them anyway. And um, they started a watch company, uh, Boutique Tactical Watches, perhaps. And then they started making knives in very, very limited batches. Well, this one is their most recent uh, model, and I believe their third, if I'm not mistaken the Mekong Delta combat folder. And it just hits all the notes perfectly for me. It is uh, a four inch blade. This is 20 CV blade steel, very sharp, but also a very stout blade um, in, in terms of grind. It's got a pretty steep grind actually, kind of does what Microtex do, kind of comes to the edge very steeply, but somehow still remains razor shearing sharp. So uh, really nice in that respect, uh, blasted, titanium frame lock has a great feel this thing is built like a tank it feels like um it's like a sabenza meets a um <laughs> what the hell man a harzy folder uh from spartan harzy sorry guys i don't know all my knives just went out the window uh but that's that's what i love about it it feels like a classic on washers super stout um american titanium frame lock uh and a lot of that is true however it's not made here in america for some reason uh, i saw two old aging navy seals kind of barefoot in a in a in a knife shop in their garage somewhere in north carolina uh making these um but that was hey that fantasy worked and it, it fed my love of this knife and uh, if you look at the contours of the handle it looks a lot like the 640 the 0640 as a matter of fact 
It's got all the lines of the 0640 handle, uh, just kind of uh, changed up just ever so slightly. Love that knife. Probably my favorite knife uh, folder overall that I got in 2022. Okay, next up, um, a great, amazing folder, but uh, a slip joint is the new Jack Wolf Knives. Late, uh, I'm sorry, low drag jack, low drag, referring to its bullet end shape. Look at this thing. This is a bullet end jack with such an extreme belly on that spear point blade. So much so that I guess we can't really call that a spear point blade. At this point, that's a drop point. I don't, I, I just, I love that blade shape to me that, uh, I don't know. See, I've always had a little bit of a beef with that parallel um, lined spear point blade that we see on traditionals where the spine and the edge are totally parallel and then they come to a, a, a sort of nondescript spear point. To me, that was always kind of the most boring. And of course, I'm being superficial and talking about its looks here for a second, but this will feed into the utility. To me, this more bulbous ended spear point blade, uh, like on this low drag jack, looks so much better and you're like yeah but it's not about looks it's about how it cuts well guess what it cook it cuts so much better look at how here i'm gonna align the spine of this blade against that straight line on this grid here well why don't i just set it down and uh and you can see the angle i should probably get a, a protractor because i'm always talking about angles uh but you can see the angle this edge presents uh, going down to that belly it's incredible, and it also puts uh, the tip right on the the bottom line of the handle here, right kind of at the bottom of that bolster. So the tip is down there at a utility sort of posture, and then you have this uh, downward raked straight edge that bellies out in this incredibly fat belly. It's an amazing blade, and it slices so well. So uh, for Christmas, uh, I got my wife some boudine sourdough bread. It gets delivered now uh, because my wife's like, I'm the only one who likes sour bread. No one ever gets to, yeah, I never get to eat my sour bread. So I got her some sourdough bread. It gets delivered. Obviously, that's too much bread. We don't eat that much bread. Uh, so I brought some to work today and I was slicing it up with this. Yes, it is a big loaf. I had to sort of pare it down to do so. Uh, but all, all it required was a simple drag. Uh, it, this thing is a, a really nice cutter. I also used it for an orange, um, and I had to be careful not to get the, uh, the juice up into the works here. That would have really bummed me out. This is brand new, uh, pretty much. Uh, thanks to Ben. Thank you, Ben Belkin sent, sent this along. Uh, beautiful micarta, of course, the usual titanium, uh, integral bolster liner setup. Incredible walk and talk. Everything about this is the same in that it is outstanding and uh, has, is basically ruining me for other slip joints uh, temporarily. Um, uh, but the thing that is different is that it's got S90V blade steel uh, instead of uh, M390, which all the other Jack Wolf knives uh, feature. Now, I think that might be a supply issue. I don't know. I have to talk to Ben about that. I think it might be a supply issue uh, because I've seen elsewhere where, uh, where M390 is being replaced by S90V. And I think it might be an availability thing. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll find that out. But a beautiful knife. And uh, go check this out. This is actually, this knife uh, is going to drop in two days as you are listening to this. In two days. So be sure. Uh, and that is, uh, what's the date? Uh, that would be uh, 11th, 12th, the 13th. So check it out. The 13th of January, 2023. These beautiful knives will be available uh, at all the usual places. This is, uh, he has gotten some really great distribution for these knives. Okay. Uh, next up on my waist, uh, in my waist at the three o'clock position, a knife I haven't carried in a long time for a reason that I finally remedied. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I had the JB knife and tool, uh, ditch pick in my, uh, in my waistband, double-edged ditch pick. And you say, why does this remind me of a delicious seafood? Well, I'll show you. Right here at the bottom of the sheath, you'll see a little, mm, it sort of looks like that muscle on a scallop that you have to tear off before you, you know, prepare it. Uh, but that is not, uh, that. that is a little piece of 
Kydex that I had to super glue on there. And then I sort of melted. I've done sort of a slapdash job on it, I must admit. Uh, but it's there for a purpose. This knife is so damn sharp that it was poking. When you put it back in, even if you're careful, uh, it will poke through the sheath and actually about that far, um, which is, you know, I would say about a 16th of an inch. Uh, so that had to be remedied. And I just didn't get around to it until last night. So I was very happy to be carrying this today because it carries so nicely, so nice and thin. And what a wicked blade. I, you know, I, I sort of bamboozle myself into thinking that something like this would be justifiably uh, uh, written off as a work or a utility knife. But I showed this to my friend Ian, uh, my my buddy who's teaching me how to fight. And uh, he was like, wow, this is, looks like a murder weapon. <laughs> I was like, oh, OK, keeping it real. You know, that's good to know uh, that when you carry something like this uh, to to. And he's not an untrained eye. I mean, the stuff he shows me is is uh, is, is horrendous. But but still to the to, to the guys who don't follow the JB knife and tool uh, set, uh, this might look like just something terribly devious and of course it's meant for self-defense but uh could be used for other things anyway had this beauty on me today uh at long last and uh, i'm glad i fixed that sheath issue uh that it's not going to poke through that and if it does well i'll put another one on top of it because i love this knife and then for emotional support today which was uh was dearly needed i had the scorpio from orion knives love this little knife great little utility knife and i had this all set up to be my toy unboxing knife uh this christmas or general purpose unboxing and tag removal knife for christmas and then i misplaced it during christmas and i could not find it and uh, i found it in the usual spot i just didn't think of it on christmas morning um maybe because we were up until all hours Christmas Eve night. Uh, anyway, this was in the bottom uh, part of my recliner. You know how when you reach under most furniture and you kind of lift up, you can feel that soft layer they have under there, that, that, that just piece of cloth that covers up the guts. Well, if I lose a knife, that's the place to go check, and you kind of feel it in there. And, uh, yep, that's where it was. So this did not get to fulfill that glorious job first uh, first uh, inaugurated by my uh, Finch Runtley, you know, an official unboxing knife for Christmas. Uh, but this would have been great. Uh, emotional support uh, as the day is long here because you have all these ways of opening it that just please and uh, a great lock and great looks. And it just so happens that David Cam is a great guy. He's the one who uh, designed and has this manufactured great knife. I love this. I love the audacious jimping on the clip that actually has a purpose that's for gauging the the depth of your tip cut if you're cutting through a box or something just a great knife and like all uh, great little big knives uh as far as i am concerned uh it's got the width of a normal sized knife um when you make it this small or or even smaller as we'll show later um, but but make it thin, it's virtually impossible to wield and open. But when you keep the handle nice and thick, uh, even if it's nice and even if it's short, it will um, it will feel like a big knife. That's why I call it a little big knife. OK, so this is what I had in my pockets today. The Resco Instruments Mekong Delta Combat Folder, the Jack Wolf Knives Low Drag Jack, the JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick, double edge, and the uh, Orion Knives Scorpio. What did you have in your pockets? Let me know. Uh, drop it in the comments below. Give me some inspiration. Um, I I have not bought many folders recently. I've been on such a, a Bowie and fixed fix knife, uh, fixed blade knife tip. Um, tip. Uh, 1990s is asking for their terms back, Bob. I've been on a buying binge, whatever you want. To, I'll be honest about it. Of uh, fixed blades, so uh, pretty much recently. So I could use a little bit of inspiration on folders. That's all I'm trying to say. It's just so difficult to say it. All right. Before we move along, I, I just want to mention that I'm I'm back to my old tricks. I, I'm and breaking tips. <laughs> uh, let's see. This knife, uh, the night horse that I love so much from Beyond ED EDC and designed by Dirk Pinkerton. Um, I practically made it a trainer by dropping it on the 
uh, basement floor that is carpeted and it's it's really thick lush carpet uh, for warmth and then it's got very thick padding underneath that and then underneath that it's got something else and then uh, concrete and this went through all of that with a mirror drop wasn't even locked open so it didn't full it didn't land with the full weight behind it and it bent the tip over like this it was just like a u and so I, I knew it would happen, but I took my pliers and to straighten it back out and it snapped off. So I answered, this was a valuable thing, first of all. Uh, this is why I cannot have nice things. At least I cannot have tips this refined and expect to make it an EDC because I've been carrying this uh, since I'd gotten it because it's such a beautiful modern Navaja. But it did a valuable service to me. I've been really, really flirting with the idea of getting uh, the uh, S35 VN and titanium frame lock version of it for almost 200 bucks. I'm not going to do that because I could just as easily drop that knife and mess up the tip and and that would be a problem. And that would really bum me out. Me, I actually really like this G10 version. It comes in three different versions for 30 bucks. So basically I could get six of them uh, for the price of the titanium one and uh, and drop them all day long and still have a couple in reserve. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to get six of them, but I'm going to get, uh, maybe I'll get, uh, you know, two other, the, the two other colors because I love this design that much. Uh, but that tip, look at that tip. What a bummer, man. That is such a buzzkill when, when you drop it and it does and you, something like that happens. But since it's such a th long and thin tip, it's actually not going to be too hard for me to reprofile that. Of course, it will look slightly wonky. I know it will be, um, but the person that I'm dueling for my honor will not notice. So that's what I'll do. Speaking of broken tips, I've also been throwing knives uh, at my old desk uh, to great success. I'm very, very excited uh, with the help of uh, the book um, that that I've featured here that Jim got me uh, that's over there under a couple of other books uh, that that and a YouTube video uh, or two has really helped me um, refine my my throwing. I'm getting better and better, though. I have noticed uh, that after a whole week of being on vacation and doing it kind of every day and then being uh, back at the office and coming home and it's dark and not throwing until the weekend, I lost some mojo. So I, I am not uh, I'm not there, but I'm excited that. I'm getting there, but look at the tips on these. These come very sharp and they are heavy. So they thud and they really uh, land with a nice thud, but they, they keep falling. Like when they fall, when I miss, I swear to God, they're like magnetic to the rocks we have right here. And they, they keep, and, and I don't have a rocky lawn at all. I wouldn't tolerate that because I got to mow the damn thing. So it, it just keeps finding things to chip. Uh, whenever I miss. So I'm really trying not to miss, but I go out there, I bring my file with me and, uh, you know, just try and file them sharp. They're hardened. So it's not so easy to do, but at least I can, you know, I can get it, uh, approximate it. So uh, I'm breaking tips. It's that season again in my life. Uh, so I got to just uh, beware of that and, and beware of what I carry where I carry it and how casual and nonchalant I'm being when I'm messing around with these things. That would probably uh, do me good anyway, just for safety. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some exciting stuff from ZT and Kershaw, which I haven't said in a while, and also uh, CRKT. And then after that, State of the Collection, and then the Seven Knife giveaway right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So in the past couple of years, my ZT sub collection has been wended down to the most essentials, one Sinkovich, one Onion, and three Emersons. 
Uh, and I thought maybe that was going to be it unless I got a, uh, a B in my bonnet for some other model and I needed to look on the secondary. I've just been seeing them come out with um, reiterations of past models. Well, that has come to an end. Uh, for ZT, they have one new knife coming out uh, that I'm aware of that is very exciting, as a matter of fact. And it's a fixed blade, which is also exciting because of the uh, fixed blade tear I just uh, described. Now, they're coming out with a rehash, sort of, of their old ZT9. Uh, this thing is the... Um, this it The ZT9 was a bayonet that they made that was designed by Mick Strider. So expensive, exclusive, and hard to find. Um, well, now they're coming out with a fixed blade, this more field knife, more camp knife version of this. I think it's beautiful. And we know that it'll have that stout, stout ZT um, build. I, I like the, this looks like a six, hang on. I should probably do my homework here. Uh, I believe this is a six inch blade, right? And a, and a five inch handle. I like the, the uh, ratio there of the blade to handle. Uh, and uh, well, it's a nice, big, full size fixed blade. Uh, it's got three V as expected. And then G10 OD scales, Kydex sheath. Uh, this is called the triple zero six, the zero, zero, zero six. I have never owned a ZT fixed blade, uh, but I would, I would uh, very quickly. Actually, I'd own this one and like it quite a bit. I'm very excited about that. Uh, but also from Kai, uh, the umbrella company is uh, from Kershaw. Look at this. This is, this is exciting. So they've had a couple of exciting things over the past couple of years. The Lucha, their, their very nice uh, Bally song, and then their launch series. And, their, and anything that they've made in America to me is exciting. Well, here we have the Livewire 9000. Great name, Livewire 9000. And out the front, automatic from Kershaw. Uh, sharing that same beautiful drop point blade with the swedge uh, that we see on the um, uh, on the various uh, new knives from Kershaw. As a matter of fact, this is reminding me of the new Lucha blade, the drop point with that swedge. Uh, very beautiful is this knife. Um, with It's got a 3.3 inch blade, but look at the shape of that. It looks... Well, if you can't see it, it really looks like it's going to stay in hand well, even on a thrust. That's one of the things about uh, out the front knives that always seem a little bit sketchy, uh, especially if they're daggers and they're kind of begging to be thrusted. Do you have enough contouring on the spine of the handle and on the dorsal side of the handle to or uh, uh, a pectoral side of the handle to to keep that grip? And I believe this does it, it, They've sort of stepped it in such a way. That's somewhat unusual for an out the front. Um, great looking knife, CPM 20 CV. That's exciting because, you know, 20 CV, they're upgrading. And then uh, as we scroll down, we'll see they have another launch five. Also uh, a, a sporting that spear point blade with the swedge. This one, a little more uh, speary, a little more bulbous, uh, but also beautiful. This is in CPM magna cut yes ladies and gentlemen magna cut comes to kershaw in the launch five now i'm not sure if this is their very first uh but it may as well be look at it and if you can't look at it it's beautiful it's evocative again of the italian stiletto like the launch 12 i think was or launch 11 uh but this one uh it has the double quillions but it's a little bit broader I keep going to the pommel of this, which is an equal sided sort of peak with jimping on both sides. It looks perfect for holding in reverse grip and capping with the thumb. Uh, the whole thing is nearly symmetrical except for that swedge. Uh, and of course the edge is not uh, sharpened on the back. This one is a 3.5 inch magna cut blade. So that means I can own this one because it's 3.5 inches. Or no, 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 actually, that means it becomes a moral imperative. If like the the three point three inch live wire nine thousand, I don't have to get because even though it is very very cool, it's still below my threshold. But this one is right there. Uh, going down the Dura Lock, that's their uh, Axis Lock. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. That's their Axis Lock. This one is nice. It looks a little bit. Uh, it's got the profile a little bit of a Ritter blade. But this is now uh, in their more um, 
budget category. We got we've got D2 blade steel, the Dura Lock is what they're calling it, and uh, the uh, this one right here is the Heist, uh, 3.2 inch drop point blade. Looks like a great little sort of EDC. And then uh, the, uh, a couple of interesting looking things that are not too interesting to me. You've got a nice looking. We go down to the flyby. Uh, that's got a beautifully shaped um, D, uh, D2 uh, Warncliffe there, man. That Warncliffe is beautiful. Uh, but three inches won't be going for that. And then this is nice looking, the conduit, uh, 8CR. So now we're going down a little bit, the radar. So some nice knives coming out from Kershaw uh, or or as uh, our good buddy. Wait, ooh, this one's nice. Oh, 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 the lateral looks nice. I didn't notice this one before because I think I saw 8CR13. So uh, some nice looking stuff here um, from Kershaw, as uh, Advanced Knife Bro would say. That is beautiful, is it not? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean my face. Uh, I meant the Kershaw we were looking at. All right, next up, CRKT, their, their new catalog uh, for 2023 has dropped. And everything I'm seeing is a collaboration, which is awesome. Uh, uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, even if the designs are not exciting to me, I think that's cool. And the first thing we see here is their new uh, follow-on to the Evoke. Uh, Joe Caswell's masterpiece of kinetic art uh, and weaponry, the uh, the Provoke. Um, did I say the Evoke? I meant the Provoke. Oh, the Evoke is the other one. Um, it, so this is a straight-bladed version of it which is kind of cool. It's a drop point. Uh, so the, the, the mechanism just follows along. You know, if you like the ring and you like that format, uh, this is cool. I used to have the evoke or the provoke. Now I can't, now I'm totally confused, but I had the karambit version of it and it was really cool. And I, I kind of, you know, as I always say, I regret getting rid of it because it was a really cool piece of engineering. Um, but this one does not tempt me at all. If I were to get it again, I would get the Karambit version again. As we scroll down, we see a Lucas Burnley. Um, I keep going. There's another Lucas Burnley. And we'll keep scrolling. And uh, and we got TJ Schwartz. This is cool. This is like a uh, compacted version of the Overland. Uh, the Overland that I oodin odd over. And that's actually the fixed bladed Overland is the knife that TJ Schwartz makes in-house uh, in hit literally in his house in the CNC that he built a garage around. Um, so this is the, the compact version of that. This new Pilar four looks really cool. It's got a clip point blade. It's that, uh, Voxne's, uh, knife we all know and love, but it's got a clip point this time. Uh, John Graham, may he rest in peace, died this past year known for the razzle they're doing a uh a commemorative knife for him this thing has a big sort of axe like handle on it um it's a big chisel ground uh affair i mean not it's not big it's a 2.3 inch blade but that handle to blade ratio it's a biggish kind of uh handle for that blade um down here we see bamboo this is called the bamboozled <laughs> by ken onion what a goofy name but uh yeah the bamboozled uh, he had one called the shenanigans. So, I mean, I guess it's not that, that goofy. The Spit by Alan Foltz. Uh, this is his follow-up on the Spew. <laughs> Two lovely names. Small pocket inverted Tanto comes to Spit. But a uh, really cool looking uh, neck knife. Uh, TJ Schwartz uh, with another flipper. Beautifully, beautiful lines on this. Reminds me of a poor Beagle shark. Uh, moving down, we see more and more collaborations. More and more. I love it. Uh, this is CRKT's strength. Uh, I'm not sure who. Oh, Ken Steigerwald did that one. Here's a uh, uh, Richard Rogers. Here's another Ken Onion. So uh, nothing in particular really jumps out at me except the fact that these are all ooh, the throwing knife, perhaps. But uh, what really jumps out at me is that these are all collaboration knives and and they're all in a budget realm because that's what CRKT accelerates at bringing knives from top top of the line designers designers who's who's uh designers and makers whose knives cost a lot of money they bring it down so that we can all we the hoi polloi can all enjoy um what they have to make so very psyched to see that i'm i'm really excited about the kershaw though the zt fixed blade 
You just might see it right here on the Knife Junkie podcast, depending on how much it costs. Okay, coming up, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection, and then we're going to get to the lucky number seven knife giveaway. But before we go over there, I just want to mention and thank uh, everyone viewing, but especially uh, the patrons. Uh, thank you so much uh, to my Patreon members. It's greatly appreciated. Helps keep the lights on here at the Knife Junkie podcast. If you want to help support the show in a monetary way, uh, That'd be greatly appreciated. You can uh, hit the QR code there right on screen or go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I realize uh, sitting here that I was remiss in mentioning that uh, I also had this on me today. This is the most, I mean, I forgot about it. This is the most wearable. This is an incredibly wearable dagger <laughs> slash uh, neck knife. If if you like neck knives, the counter tack too. It also comes with a really actually very good belt clip. Uh, that goes in this on this little sheath. I just removed it because I like it uh, as neck carry. Um, I'll carry it under the under there, and if I feel in danger, which I don't really, uh, I'll unbutton the shirt so I could reach in and grab it. But a great knife, the counter tack too. Uh, if you're interested, wanted to mention that. Okay, so from Carry at Off Grid Knives, uh, I got some gems here that I want to show off. Uh, but before I do. Uh, I got to show you this beauty. So uh, have you listened to the interview podcast this week, the Sunday podcast? It's with Steve Kalari. You know him perhaps as Super Steel Steve. Well, I bought, if you did listen to that, you know I bought one of his knives and man alive, it is awesome. Uh, Steve is a very outspoken guy uh, in the knife community about, well, he's just a very outspoken guy in general. Uh, and I like that. You know where you stand with a person like that. He uh, is very outspoken in the knife world over the past years about uh, geometry, the importance of heat treat, uh, the importance of uh, accurate um, uh, HRC reporting, all this kind of stuff, and uh, and and also Chinese manufacturing. And uh, yeah, he's a very outspoken guy. You uh, you may know him for that. Well, he has got a very very refined hand when it comes to grinding blades. Uh, this is, uh, so he's in Georgia and he is part of a, the guild, the Georgia knife makers guild, I think is what it's called. And, uh, and he shops at, uh, at, uh, um, at Papa's, you know, owned by, um, owned by, uh, uh, Mr. Roy of, uh, Fiddleback Forge and a couple of other knife makers. And he's embedded in that community. It's very cool to see. Um, he is using their proprietary steel 8760, and it's this amazing, um, flexible, super sharp, high edge retention, um, and somewhat low corrosion, uh, high carbon blade steel. And in this case, it is so incredibly thin. It is so wickedly thin uh, that behind the edge, it's five thousandths uh, behind the edge. Very, very thin. Uh, so much so that you can barely see the actual cutting edge there. Um, but wicked, wicked sharp is this. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to cut produce, mushrooms. Uh, I did a whole bunch of shiitakes the other day. They basically cut themselves out of fear uh, and anticipation of, uh, of the cut. Uh, it rocks nicely. It's got a very gentle curve, but it's got that uh, sort somewhat Japanese profile. I love the downward tip uh, because uh, I do use the tip on my kitchen knives, especially when opening packages, uh, food packages, that kind of thing. Um, but but you can use it for certain pull cuts through through soft materials. I don't tend to do that because uh, I tend to think worry about dulling the tip. But you could do that to great effect with this. It's got beautiful micarta handle scales that uh, are antique micarta. Um, turned out chocolate. Uh, I asked for maroon, and uh, it kind of 
he said it was sort of a dark maroon. You can see it up here a little bit, but with polish, uh, it kind of turned chocolate. He's like, dude, I can make you another one. I'm like, don't you dare. This is beautiful. Uh, I love, I love chocolate. <laughs> I love this brown antique micarta just fine. And if you look, there's a very thin white spacer and then a, a thicker black spacer. And it's very interesting. You got to listen to the podcast with him. And uh, I'm going to be brutally honest. If he has turned you off in the past uh, with his, um, well, outspokenness, uh, give him another chance and listen to him talk about his passion of knife making. Um, uh, it, it was uh, quite inspirational, but also great to to hear and, and, and to see what his strategy is. Uh, as a professional chef himself, uh, he wants to get these in the hands of uh, people like him who work in, well, he no longer works in a kitchen. He now is a little bit higher up, but uh, he wants it to be uh, on lines uh, in restaurants all over the place. So he will be making knives that are affordable like this one, uh, and then making knives that are less affordable, more in um, special uh, special drops, you know, uh, small batches of, of special, you know, uh, steels and handles and stuff like that. Uh, I'm very excited about this. My first <coughs> custom and handmade kitchen knife. Um, so, yeah, very excited. Uh, at first, I thought uh, I wasn't going to let my my daughter, who is now starting to uh, get into cooking, use it. But after talking to Steve, uh, he made it for abuse too. He, knowing working in professional chick uh, chickens kitchens, he tested it for abuse. So I'm going to let my daughter use it, and uh, so she can see what a knife should cut like. All right. Okay, so some off-grid knives here. Let's check these out. These are awesome. So the first two are, are models that I have experience with, have, and uh, um, these are just in a new coloration. And um, man, they are sweet. Let me show these off. First, uh, one of my very, very favorites, definitely a house favorite. Uh, we have two of these, and now we have three because I'm keeping this one. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, this is the Baby Rhino. It, and this is one of those knives like the um, Orion Scorpio that maintains its full width, uh, even though it's short. Now, this is the, the big one that it comes from, which is a little wider. But this, uh, it still is a, a full thickness knife and therefore feels great in hand. Um, and plus it's got a great, uh, profile to feel good in hand as well. Uh, this knife has the gray wash and the coyote tan, and he's been, uh, putting out these knives with this coloration recently. I've been showing them off. I love them. It started with the stinger XL with that gray wash and tan, a coyote tan, and then the Raptor, one of my favorite utility knives of all time, this design, the Raptor. Uh, I, I frankly thought it was ridiculous when I saw it. I thought he was just trying to design something different, uh, but really it's a super utility knife. Uh, and then, and then also this, this, uh, back country, which was, um, not only given this coloration, but modified, uh, in the handle to be even more comfortable, more ergonomic. So that's a great thing about off grid knives is Kerry Orviche, the, the designer and man behind the company keeps constantly improving listening to feedback all of his v2 models for instance have the sunken clip with the flat head screws he listened and uh and i love that but anyway this knife is awesome and since we have the the black on black the blackout version and the gray on gray uh, we have to keep this one um so uh my daughter has a, a name for a color like this she calls it grayish when it's sort of gray sort of beige. So this one has a grayish handle. Okay. Next up, it's Big Brother. Now, this is one of my favorite full-size um, knives out there, flippers out there, but one of my favorite uh, off-grid designs. Uh, this has always caught my eye. I recommended my dad get one for my brother, and then I immediately became jealous of my brother, uh, like, a, like an immature little brat. I didn't voice it, but it was happening internally. Um, and then uh, I got the all black one, which I love, and I've used a bunch. So this one I would keep, but I have the all black one. And I feel like it might just be too greedy for me to keep this just because I love the colors. It is so 
Nice, but I'm going to give this one away. And this is the V2, of course, with the sunken screws, the amazing action. Uh, this is a Best Tech build, I believe. If not built at Best Tech, it's built in uh, a Taiwan manufacturer. He, he does some of his knives in a Taiwan manufacturer. That uh, Stinger XL is made in the Taiwan factory. And Man Alive, uh, they'll give Best Tech a run for their money, no doubt. Uh, so this is the V2. Whoops, <laughs> hit, hit the old camera there. That is a full-size knife, so it might hit your camera if you're too close to it. 154 cm blade steel, uh, nice and thin and nice and broad with a very high height flat grind, giving you a super thin behind the edge, uh, cutting edge. All of their knives, with mm, one or two exceptions in the fixed blade category, uh, their knives are incredible incredible slicers and cutters uh if you're talking about just going through like double walled cardboard it, uh, all of them zip through them the one that i would say does the least in terms of a folder is this one because of that relatively low height flat grind all that being said this one is still a monster with cardboard so uh their knives if you have any sort of utility task they, their knives are awesome uh they, as a matter of fact they are the one knife that i do uh i have uh, personally a um an affiliate link with. So if you want to buy any off-grid knife ever in history, you go to the, the knife junkie.com slash off grid and uh, they give me a shekel uh, and I love it. And it works out great. Uh, so yes, I do fully endorse off grid knives. Um, all right, next up, let me see. Uh, this knife is the new tracker X2. Now I had not experienced this knife uh, until now, and I am very impressed with it, as I have been with all of their fixed blades. You know, some people accelerate at fixed blades, some people accelerate at folders. Uh, this company accelerates at both. They remind me of Cold Steel. They're kind of, you know, minus minus a lot of the marketing bravado, if you will. They remind me of Cold Steel in that they kind of have the fixed blade and they kind of have their folder formats down um, and it works for them and they can work within those parameters and kind of knock it out of the park each time this is an awesome outdoor knife this off-grid tracker this thing is awesome here i have it in the black wash and uh i am going to keep the black wash but i have it in this stone wash and i will be giving this away as well i haven't figured out when or what the circumstances will be, uh, I have, uh, but but I will be giving the, these two off-grid knives away, the two center ones. Uh, very high, uh, a full flat uh, grind, uh, pretty stout. I think this is three eighths. Uh, no, uh, three eighths of an inch, maybe. Um, very still gets nice and thin behind the edge. I'm going to take mine out and do some light batoning with it. By light, I mean thin batoning, and see how it does. Uh, this is Cryo D2 and Micarta. Really nice contour handle with uh, with hex, hexagonal milling for grip. Just an outstanding knife. And man, they have improved their sheaths too on their uh, V2 versions. They've improved their sheaths. They've gone to the pancake, which I appreciate, or the uh, taco, the fold over, which I appreciate because it, it lowers the um, uh, profile of the sheath itself. But you can still use this sort of double sided. Uh, uh, belt loop, whether it's this or a tech lock or something like that, it still works fine, just fastened on the one side. So, off grid knives absolutely thrashing it with these, uh, with these new colors and with this uh tracker. I love this knife. This, this is going to get some use. This, this seems like a great, uh, just sort of all arounder that you're wearing on your belt the whole time you're on your camping trip, and it will do everything, uh, food. Uh, camp chores, carving. It just seems like that kind of a knife, do all knife. Um, okay, so before we wrap the um, state of the collection and get to the lucky number seven knife giveaway, I got to show you uh, the last thing. That I'm very excited. Uh, my, my Cold Steel Voyager XL lineup is now uh, complete. Complete minus uh, one special edition, if I could ever find it, the, uh, the Rawls. Um, Tonto, I'll find it someday. Uh, but this is what I was waiting for. And now I have all the blade shapes. Uh, I used to have this and the Tonto 
in Aus 8. I gave them away when I found the Recon XLs in Tonto and Bowie and then regretted that almost immediately. So now I have all of the um, Voyager XL blade shapes, most of them in Aus 10 and a couple in Aus 8 and one in uh, 8, uh, 8 um uh, uh, XHP. But this this is the uh, clip point, as you can see. What a beautiful clip point blade. They just really, really have an affinity for that, that uh, blade style at Cold Steel. Um, if you are curious, yes, they are that awesome. Uh, I If you want one big folder, I highly recommend an XL Voyager. They do a great job with their OS 10 blade steel, as far as I know, and as far as I've seen others test it. Um, and, and the build is just unbelievably sturdy and stout. Plus with a knife like this, you can do, I'm going to go to the main camera here. You can do things like light chopping because you have, yeah, you, you can be all the way up here for close detail work, so to speak. You can be right here. You can be back here. This is kind of my preferred uh, area, or you can come back all the way back in here and use it as a light chopper. Uh, and it's got that triad lock, which is arguably the strongest lock out there. Uh, so uh, I do love the Voyager XLs and they're under a hundred bucks and they're five and a half inches. And, you know, you might not be comfortable carrying it, but it's great to throw in your backpack because you have nearly fixed blade capability, nearly fixed blade capability in a folder that takes up a lot less space. So highly recommend a large folder for that reason. All right. Let's give away some knives. I'm very excited about this. This is our lucky number seven giveaway. Uh, the only reason I call it that is because we have seven knives to give away, and I have felt very lucky recently because people are tuning in and people are sharing their thoughts, and my subscriber uh, base is growing, and the conversation is growing, and it's exciting, and I feel very lucky. Uh, for each and every one of you out there. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to win one of these seven knives. And what they all have in common mm, is that they are all really cool. Some of them are more expensive than others, but they're all, they all have a, a second kind of cool, as Nut and Fancy would say. And if you don't know what that means, look it up. Okay, so let's get to the first one. This is the Migiron Acri. So the, the rules behind this content or this giveaway are that last week um, I gave you a week to um, to comment down below saying I'm in. And that's all you had to say. You had to subscribe and say I'm in. So uh, we are going to uh, we have uh, through the the platform we are talking to you on now. There is a random generator that will choose from all of the comments that say I'm in. So um, that's how we're going to pick. First knife on the block. This thing is beautiful. These knives, all seven of them, were donated by my good friend Dave at This Old Sword Blade Reviews. You have to check out his channel. Uh, if you like this channel at all, you will love his channel. He's got incredible knives. And um, he calls himself old. He's older than I am. But the man, uh, you need to see him with a sword. And he's got a couple of videos on his channel. Uh, he's an incredible martial arts practitioner, especially in Kali. Okay, so uh, here it is. The Miguron Acri 2. Just a beautiful, gentlemanly um, folder uh, front flipper. Modern folder front flipper. Uh, you, and you've got accents of gold on the liners, which actually I thought was really chintzy and horrible looking uh, on the Praxis by Civivi when it first came out. But on this, with this beautiful contour G10 black handle scale, the cool proprietary pivot, which is the only marking, and the uh, nice sculpted titanium pocket clip. I say that gold just looks like a touch of class. It's like you kind of want to carry this uh, when you're wearing a tuxedo. Uh, but you don't have to. This would look equally smart in a pair of jeans. Uh, and you're in good stead here with this uh, with this uh, Miguron, just beautiful. I think it's a very clean and lovely design. And uh, it works very well as a front flipper. If you have any doubts, uh, this thing is a great front flipper. I am just terrible with my left hand at it. So I'm just gonna hold it with, hold, open it with my right and hold it with my left. All right, Jim, let's do this. Let's Let's pull it up and let's pick a winner. Who will win? And as he pulls up the uh, the thing, I'm going to say good luck to all of you. I hope you all win. But since you can't, uh, whoever does, 
I love y'all. All right, let's do this. Pick a winner. Comment must contain I'm in. All right. Let's do this. Choose from all comments. All right. All right. The winner is Matthew Rust. Matthew Rust. And uh, actually, hmm, I'm going to write this down as we go because uh, I know how my brain works. And if I don't write it down, uh, Matthew Rust uh, may just get uh, something else. <laughs> so let me put this down. All right. So Acri, Matthew Rust. And you're all saying, Bob, you're so old. You could just look at the video again. And yes, I could. But I'm going to do it my way because this is my show. All right. Uh, congratulations, Matthew Rust, uh, on winning this Acri. I will put it right in its box and get it out post haste. Okay, next up, the petrified fish wing. This one is cool. Look at this. Uh, I guess I'll be saying that about each one of these knives. That's That was the one factor uh, that it had to have like an X factor, cool factor. And this one has it in spades. Uh, let's come under here. Uh, petrified fish, a weird name for a great company that just kind of burst onto the scene, making very cool knives. Many of them very unique and some of them just classic like the victor bowie that that i own very classic looking knife this one i really love that blade shape uh, i'd love to see that blade shape on a large fixed blade i, I think it'd be, it'd be a very cool fighter uh, style blade but this one on this wing blade as you can see the milling in the blade uh, if you can see the milling in the blade evokes a wing uh and so I'm guessing that's why they call it that. Uh, this hump there looks a little odd, uh, but man, does it feel good. It fills in that spot on your thumb. You don't want it all empty. You want it, you want it, you want as much contact as possible. It's it's like staying sticky in martial arts. Like you might not be hitting the guy, but hopefully you're touching him and, and somehow. Um, uh, and that's what you get here. You get constant contact. I should, I should. I should name a service that or something. You get constant contact there. You got jimping back here on the flat that uh, really, you know, this jimping is important. I have come to, to recognize, especially on flippers, because you hold the knife like this when you flip. And sometimes that's the only thing keeping it from shooting out of your hand, uh, especially with smaller flippers. Uh, this is a liner lock, a beautiful D2 blade uh, and uh, liner here. Awesome action. Um, Interesting pocket clip. David Chen apparently is the designer of this. Um, and like I said, I would love to see them make a fixed blade version of this uh, with that blade. That blade is just so handsome. All right. And I love also, not for nothing, the Thundercloud blue handle. <clears throat> okay. Let's do this. Let us pick a winner. Um, we will pull up the pick a winner. Let's see. Oh. And it's this thing works so fast. It's Weston Probst. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Weston Probst wins this knife. Uh, Weston, congratulations. He's a, uh, a frequent contributor to Thursday Night Knives. Always has something cool to say. Also, for some reason, I like the name Weston Probst. Uh, something about it is very gratifying to say. So very happy to be sending this petrified fish wing to you. Petrified fish wing. Weston probst okay congratulations sir why did i pick a mechanical pencil there we go this one won't break newfangled mechanical pencils what are they trying to they're trying to get us to do all sorts of stuff all right here we go next up we gave one of these away not too long ago in the gentleman junkie knife giveaway this thing is a cool one uh this comes from max ace also just a cool company uh max ace offers knives in the high high end uh, with super sculpted titanium and and high end blade steel, and then uh, they have their um, more budget models, and their budget models are awesome. Actually, yesterday I was carrying my where is it, my Sandstorm K, which is enormous and uh, a, a very very awesome knife. Uh, this is a little bit more practical and utilitarian than that Sandstorm, but still a very good looking knife and feels great in hand the blade to me reminds me of like an se um 
SE blade. It's got that uh, graceful drop point. Very thin uh, behind the edge. Nice slicer is the um, Balance K here. It's got a K110 blade. K110 is analogous to D2, and it's got a uh, an anodized deep carry pocket clip, uh, sculpted G10 handle scales, comfortable and utilitarian. Plus, it's got a finger choil that it'll do in a pinch. I wouldn't be too confident if you got big sausage fingers uh, gripping there and then squeezing. You might you might come away from it bleeding ever so slightly. Uh, this one also, like the Acri that came before it, uh, has a uh, and the petrified fish has that uh, plain blade, clean, sterile blade with just the um, the pivot showing the logo. I love that. Um, I think that should be everywhere. I think that should be a universal trend. Um, I dig that a lot. All right. So let's figure out to whom this will go, uh, this Max Ace Balance K. All right. Uh, let's we'll do it since this since this isn't the wheel that spins and takes some time, we'll do a countdown. We'll count down from 17. No, I'm just kidding. We'll count down from three. All right, let's pick a winner for this. Max Ace Balance K in three, two, and one. Eric Sherman. Eric Sherman. Congratulations, Eric Sherman. You have won the Max Ace Balance K. Uh, I'm happy to be sending this to you. Also, um, I failed to mention before, uh, go to the, the uh, website, uh, knifejunkie.com and send me your, uh, or you go to the Bob, Bob at the knifejunkie.com and send me your mailing address so I can get these in the mail uh, this coming week. The Balance K, Eric Sherman, nicely done, sir. Uh, this is a cool knife. I think you will like it. Though I don't really know you, if you're here, I bet you'll like it. Okay, next up, this one is exciting. They're all exciting. I love them all. Uh, this one is probably the highest end, uh, technically speaking. Um, is it the coolest? That's up for debate, but uh, highest end, I would say yes. This is a Tucson knife, and it's a Tepi design. Um, that is a very cool... Uh, they, they have designed some really interesting things, and I cannot remember the name of the gentleman I spoke to from Tepe Designs at the Tucson booth. Uh, he was a very nice guy, but his name was not Tepe. <laughs> I, I always assumed that was the last name, and it could be, but it just wasn't the last name of the guy that may have designed this knife uh, or designs some knives under that label. Okay, that was way too long and cumbersome, uh, so I'm going to stop. This beauty is called the TS381, and it is... I think it's a very cool looking knife. I love the long, slender, pointy blade. I, I do love that. It, it's a pretty stout uh, blade stock so that this uh, very fine point has some beef at it at the tip. So it's not going to uh, break off like that night horse did, though mm, that's still a pretty fine tip. Um, it's got a full height flat grind and a nice curved... Um, um, plunge grind, leaving you plenty of space to sharpen that up. But you probably won't have to because this is M390 blade steel, which means it's better. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is M390 blade steel, which means it's more expensive and has higher edge retention. Um, uh, and this is numbered 027. I wonder if that is a serial number. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, it's got an interesting pocket clip, somewhat phallic. Uh, it's a frame lock with nice sculpting here um, and a, a, a nice lanyard slot. You know, I do appreciate a slot as opposed to a hole because sometimes the sometimes depending on the type of pocket you have, you might want to slide the um, lanyard just the, or the fob all the way into your pocket. And if it's got a slot and a little bit of room to move, sometimes it makes that that easier. Uh, so kind of a specialized thing, uh, but really great action um, and and just that amazing Tucson build um, flipper. And it also has that opening lozenge shaped opening. So, yeah, you can you can spidey flick it. And then to crown it all off. A crowned spine. Just a nice touch. OK, so let us just let us uh, find out. Uh, to whom this beautiful, rather 
high-end knife goes. Okay, let us do the countdown. Let me take a sip of coffee too, just to build a little bit of anticipation. Mm, that's good. <clears throat> Jules, I don't need you to tell me I make good coffee. All right, in three, two, and one. And just like that, it's Flip Solo. Flip Solo winning the Tucson TS 381. That's awesome, Flip Solo. I recognize your name from the comments and from uh, a TNK or two. Uh, congratulations. I'm very happy to be sending this off to you. Be sure you send your address to the knife junkie at or Bob at the knife junkie.com. Okay, next up, this is a cool one from the same design, from the same atelier, uh, but from their more mm, pret a porter atelier. Uh, this is the six leaf, and I believe it's got my dirty paw prints all over it, so you'll have to excuse me. This is the six leaf SL02, SL02. Uh, just got cool in spades. You don't need me to explain why, but I will. Um, let's start from the back. You've got a great uh, triangular pommel. I mentioned that on the new Out the Front by Kershaw. It's a, a great shape for capping with the thumb because it gives you that little peak to wrap your thumb over. So I like the pommel. I like the deep carry pocket clip. This one has some screws, uh, but it's high up enough that it's not going to really uh, interfere with your clothing. It's got a really interesting... Um, uh, camp, not canvas, but uh, sort of micarta made from some sort of sack cloth, uh, some sort of burlap y kind of thing, but a tighter weave. Uh, I'm not sure, but it it's uh, they do a good job with it. It's obviously cheap, but they do a great job with it. Uh, no voids, it's a nice material. Uh, and then you have this cool flipper tab, it reminds me of the commander model of a 1911, you know, with that uh, circular hole through. Um, hammer with the with the with the jimping. You've got a nice big flat there on the guard area where you can come up for uh, close in uh, carving work and that kind of thing. If you want to get your hand real close to the edge, uh, a, a really attractive double peaked spear point. Uh, I've been through this before. That's probably not a spear point. And can it be double peaked and a spear point? Probably not uh, by definition. But an interesting thing about this is that it maintains width. The blade maintains width all the way almost to the tip, similar to a Tonto. But how they do that down here on the grind, instead of that faceted uh, Tonto grind on an American-style Tonto, they have that full thickness, but they put a secondary bevel uh, right here at the, at the front. And then you have that third bevel, which is the cutting edge. So a really cool thing. I, I love that detail, and I've seen that. I'm trying to remember on, oh, that, that looks nice, just like that. I'm trying to remember whose custom knives I see that on. Um, I know I've seen that, I think, on, on a Greg Light, Lightfoot knives. He does something similar to that with the swedge. But can you think of anyone whose forward edge has that sort of triple sort of bevel effect? I, I feel like I've seen it before. I just can't think of it. If you can, uh, drop it in the comments, please. Uh, awesome action on this. Uh, a really, really nice action. And um, and it says here, Rattlesnake Design, D2. Okay, so Rattlesnake Design and D2 on bearings. This is a cool knife. Okay, so who is going to win the Six Leaf SL02? Let's find that out in three, two, and one. Vince A. All right, Vince. This is now yours. This six leaf SL02 is yours to do what thou wilt. But I hope uh, I hope you use it because I think this one is going to be a cool one to use with this really, really sharp and interesting blade. I'm sorry, uh, Jim, uh, can you flash back to that real quick? I just want to make sure I get the the oh Vince A. I was gonna say the spelling correct, but Vince pretty sure how to spell that. Uh, okay, Vince, congratulations, sir. Uh, this six leaf SL02 is now yours just in my hands, but not for long. Okay. Second to last. Now this one, this penultimate selection, uh, 
has been uh, was in 2022. I mean, people went bonkers over this. Uh, Jared Neve, um, uh, Stasa, uh, who else? A, a lot of other people just loved this knife. Uh, and I saw what that meant. This is the only knife of any of them that I carried, and I carried it for one day, and I didn't even carry it. I had it in a zipper pouch, you know, with felt, and I and it was my uh, emotional support knife. So it got flipped at my desk at work uh, one day. And uh, so that's the carry I did with this. This is the Kubi moment. Oh, <laughs> I'm, now I'm going to inspect it. Okay, this is the <laughs> this is the Kubi momentum. It's been carried and it's been uh, dropped about three inches to a paper tablet. Um, <laughs> sorry to the future owner of this, uh, but it did take a little take a little piece of my paper off. So that's cool. It's nice and sharp. Uh, Mananza's design D two. Now, what this is such a standout for, like all Kubis, it's just got amazing action. And the fact that this is a really superiorly designed front flipper makes the action even more, all the more enjoyable. Yes, you can spidey flick it. Yes, you can thumb flick it. And both are gratifying and great. Uh, but really, this really wins the the front flipper contest of the year. Uh, I mean, just feels great. And if I can do that with my forefinger and it doesn't uh, like bother my forefinger, I feel like it's a very good design because uh, that's not a surface I, I ordinarily do too much with. So uh, when I front flip and it's too st stiff and the detent isn't right, uh, it's no good. Now this Kubi gets it right in that it does the proprietary pivot but they put the writing on the blade too. It doesn't need to be in both spots. Uh, not not a um, deal breaker, uh, especially with a blade that cuts this well. Presumably, uh, I did not cut with it. But uh, if you watch Neve's test with or uh, um, uh, uh, Stas's test with it, he takes it through the ringer, as does uh, Jared Neve and uh, and many others. You can see how this thing performs. Uh, but just a beautiful knife, feels great in hand. And um, I'm excited uh, to pass this along because this was one that almost, uh, you know, almost disappeared. You know, I don't know what happened to it. It's gone. It's gone in the fourth drawer down. All right, let's figure out who's going to get this Kubi momentum in three, two, and one. All right, Agent Orange Peel. Agent Orange Peel, this is going to you, sir. Uh, Agent Orange Peel, a contributor to Thursday Night Knives. Happy to see this going to you, sir. I know you will love this. Uh, and by the way, I love the cool camo G10. We don't see that too much anymore. There, It, it, it sparked for a little while, and I, I always wanted a PM2 in that camo uh, G10. But uh, seems to be seems to be trending out. I like it. All right, last on this list, and and maybe the hardest to give away due to my uh, penchant for big folders is this from Dagger Knives out of Russia. Uh, Dagger spelled with two R's. This is the Vendetta, a five-inch bladed dagger style blade. To me, it actually looks more like a spearhead than any other spear point blade I've talked about. It actually looks like a spear. Uh, more than anything, even more than a dagger. Uh, this is such a cool knife. I I I I, I want to get a, one of these. I want to get a dagger, and I want to get a vendetta. This is a very cool knife. It they do the large format well. Uh, this is kind of like uh, it feels more stout than the um, what are those called? The large Kershaw folders that came out, uh, the large Kershaw clip points. Feels more stout than those. I'm sorry, I can't remember what they're called at, the, at this instant. But they're nice and slender, kind of like those knives. Uh, so that's that's kind of a cool factor here. Uh, this is a steel frame lock with a secondary lock there, um, which I can't imagine you actually needing with this because that lock bar is uh, somewhat short uh, by comparison uh, to the length of the lock side so that it, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
it's a little stouter to open or to close. So you don't, and, and when you're gripping it, you're gripping it like this. So chances are you're not going to need this. However, if you're going to take advantage of the length and come way back here and, you know, have some standoff reach, uh, yeah, I guess maybe that secondary lock might come in handy. Anyway, if you're going to use this as a fighting knife and you're going to square off with someone, because that's kind of what this looks like, uh, you'll definitely want to engage that, that secondary lock. So, um, I hope uh, I hope you are ready to take on the challenge of having a dainty tip like that, a pointy, pointy tip like that, because I will tell you, I have not had the best luck just recently. Uh, this, by the way, is sort of a, a reflective red and silver twill. I think it's not carbon fiber. I think that's a carbon fiber layer uh, uh, laminated on G10, kind of like uh, uh, Spyderco does. All right, let's find out who gets this vendetta in three, two, and one. Kevin Main. Kevin Main, congratulations. You got my, I mean, you got the dagger vendetta out of this contest. Congratulations. Uh, I am quite sure you will you will like this knife. Kevin Main Dagger. Okay. I'm quite sure you will all love these knives. Um, if you're here and you put I'm in, chances are you do. If you don't, you can do with them what you like. But just know that I'm sending these out to you out of a feeling of appreciation, out of a feeling of just luckiness. I am a lucky man in many, many ways. And, uh, and, and a lot of that has to do with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and as I mentioned, coming up, we'll give some off grids away. We've got uh, other giveaways coming up too. So. Uh, if you didn't win this time, there's always chances in the future. All right. I've gone way too long, as Jim would attest, no doubt. Uh, so for him, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, thank you so very much. And don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast